Okay, so I'm sure uh, when I say in and out, you guys think a bunch of different things. Wow, that's amazing. Let's go get some. Or, you know, uh, uh, let's go get some. Or, you know, let's, like, let's just chill. You think of cars, you think of the 50s, you think of all kinds of things. But when I, when I hear in and out, being an employee, I think of hustling. I know you're thinking, why, why would you be thinking of hustling? Well, it's really hard working at In-N-Out. It's, there's a lot of things you have to maintain or whatever. Um, you have to maintain, like, the dining room, the drive through and there's, like, they usually only have, usually, like, five people on staff working the whole thing, even when it gets busy. And, uh, something, uh, that related to how, how I would perceive, in an ex like, an extreme way, how I would perceive me working at In-N-Out is uh, a little skip with Cat Williams uh, during his comedy stand-up in American Hustle, and I'd like to show you guys a little clip. You guys have fast food. Go to... Uh, PC. The volume is on the... There's a little dial. So like I said, that's from his, uh, I probably take, but he depicts it how easy it would be to work. Um, which is why today I would like to reveal to you the history of uh, in and out um, First of all, I want to apologize in advance throughout this speech as you guys start to get hungry. Um, I'm sorry. Um, the first, the first in and out was founded in 1948 in Baldwin Park on the intersection of Interstate uh, 10 and Francisco, Princess Francis Quito Drive. Uh, by Harry and Esther Snyder, um, who were brought up in a pretty average family. Harry and Esther had the unique idea since Harry's w Harry was good with electronics, that they would have a drive through restaurant where you order through a speaker because they couldn't afford um, a big lot to have a parking lot, like ha have a car hop like regular people, like other restaurants, like Sonic, for instance, um, thus making them um, the founders of the drive through the actual drive through um, their menu was pretty basic, only only consisting of burgers, which cost 25 cents, fries, which were 15 cents, and drinks, which were uh, a whopping 10 cents. Uh, and shakes were made with the real ice cream. Before they opened their stores, they wanted to have a standard goal, which was to give the customer the freshest, highest quality food money could buy uh, with friendly service and a clean environment. Um, they also wanted to add personal touches to the company, like added, adding uh, the cross palm trees, which you see on the cups and on the on the walls. Um, the reason they added these palm trees is because of the movie It's a Mad, Mad, Mad Real World, was Harry's uh, favorite favorite movie. Um, and there's there's a scene where the main character finds treasure, and underneath that treasure is I'm sorry, they find the cross cross palm trees, and underneath the cross palm trees is the treasure, and Harry just wanted to uh, make in and out the public's treasure, which is why they have, at most stores, they have a cross palm trees in the front. Um, Harry and Esther had uh, two sons named Guy and Rich, who got into the bu business at an early age, started from the ground up. Uh, three years later, after their first opening, uh, they opened in uh, San Gabriel Valley, but the company continued to stay relatively small until the 1970s. Uh, after Harry's death in uh, 1979 at the age of 67 due to lung cancer, Harry's young, 
younger son, uh, Rich, decided to take over as president, owning what it was now, uh, or what was then 18 stores, uh, when he was only 24 years old. During his 20 years as president, he had opened a headquarters in Baldwin Park to monitor the freshness and overall quality of the ingredients. And uh, he also created an In-N-Out University in Irvine to help train new employees that are getting hired at new stores. Um, in 1984, Rich and Mrs. Snyder uh, founded the Child Abuse Foundation, which turned into the In-N-Out Foundation, which uh, raised uh, millions of dollars over the past several years, and 100% of that went straight to the kids who needed it. Uh, Rich, uh, that's uh, Harry and Esther on the right, and their two boys on the left. We got Rich and Mrs. Snyder. Um, Rich also uh, further expanded in and out from 18 stores to 93 stores, including uh, the first store out of California, which is, of course, had to be in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, in 19, 1980, Rich decided to add Bible verses on the bottom of the cups and on the burger wrappers, like. Revelation 3.20 and the common John 3.16. Um, in 1993, after Rich opened store number 93 in Fresno, uh, Rich and four other passengers died in a plane crash caused by uh, wave turbulence on their way to John Wayne Airport, uh, making uh, his brother Guy uh, chairman of the board and CEO. Uh, while Guy was chairman, he extended in and out not only to more stores in Nevada, but in Arizona as well. Uh, and grew from a total of 93 stores to 140 stores, all of them consisting of the same menu, but with a little increase in price of items, from the 10 cents to now $2.16, uh, I think it is now. Um, by this time, they added a secret menu, which isn't really a secret menu, it's just a list of commonly ordered items such as animal style or protein style. Um, they're not a they're not on the regular. I'm sorry, they're not on the regular menu. But after being president for six years, Guy dies, uh, caused by an overdose of Vicodin in 1999. Astonishing, after uh, both sons have passed away, Esther Snyder, the original co-founder, became uh, the the new president. And while under her leadership, she opened stores in Washington. Unfortunately, Esther died in 2006 at the age of uh, 86, leaving the presidency to Mark Taylor, Vice President of Operations. He was able to open more stores in Utah. Um, but his presidency did not last long, not because he died, but because Harry and Esther's only grandchild is going to, grant to gain her grandmother's inheritance, which is the uh, shares of in and out and take over. And as of January 1st, 2010, uh, Lizzie, Lindsay Snyder Martinez took the reins and became the sixth president, making Mark the chief operating officer. Um, since Lizzie has started, she's already starting to plan more stores in Texas, adding the current total of uh, 240 stores. And even though two, 240 is not that much over the past 60 years, um, but they don't want it to fall apart when management, because the manager the program is extremely complex, but they don't want it to fall apart um, when stores go uh, separate from far away from each other. That's why you usually see uh, an in and out at least usually like two miles or three miles away from each other. Um, and uh, because because in and out has so much hype, that's, that's another reason why they make the management really strict. Uh, this happened, and they don't want it to uh, well, pretty much just disintegrated into nothing like Krispy Kreme did. Everyone got all hyped up about it and they opened up a bunch of Krispy Kremes over the place and they just started closing down. Uh, in and out has become so popular that in back in 2007, they filed a lawsuit. Oh, that's Lindsay right there. They filed a lawsuit against a restaurant called Shatters because of what they sold, like a stubby double to in and outs double double and stubby style instead of in and outs animal with protein style. Uh, the restaurant also looks similar to in and out like the dining room layout and the red-white tiling pattern. There's the menu and the red-white tiling inside. There's the website. And uh, 
When all was said and done, uh, chatters were shut down. In closing, the road uh, to success was long and rigorous, but in the end, living living by their quota, which again was to give customers the freshest, highest quality food and money could buy, with friendly service and clean environment, ultimately worked extremely well for them. Which leads to the question, if any company had this kind of uh, concrete structure, could they, could they be just as successful?